few months ago we made a video discussing the process of mounting a rifle scope and that video was accepted with a fair amount of enthusiasm which is interesting considering just how technical the video was and some would say boring <laughs> but in this video we're going to carry on in that same vein and discuss torque specs for your scope mounts and why it's so important to torque your mounts to the correct setting and also the consequences of not doing so. Now obviously to measure your torque being applied you'll need a proper torque driver like this one from Fixit Sticks. This is an awesome piece of kit. We'll put a link down below. There's also other companies that make fantastic torque drivers like uh, Wheeler Engineering but basically a torque driver will allow you to do things like torque down your, your rings to your scope talk down your rings to your Picatinny base, talk down the base itself, and talk down the action screws on your rifle stock. So why is it so important to, to talk down your mounts correctly? Well, the obvious answer is that you need everything to be tight enough so that it, it can't come loose when the rifle recoils, or if something gets bumped, or, you know, is not gonna shift anywhere, you're not gonna get a point of impact shift, but not so tight that you, can, that you crush the body tube of your scope or impinge some of the internal components of your rifle scope. To understand what can go wrong inside a scope when you torque your mounts down too hard, you've gotta understand what lies beneath the body tube. Many people have a perception that a scope is just an objective lens, an ocular lens, some mechanical parts and nothing in between, but that could not be further from the truth. Some of our scope models, like the Titan for example, have 17 lenses. So you've got obviously some of your lenses here, but there's a whole lot happening in between. And part of that is that you've got inside the front part of your scope here, between the saddle and your objective bell, inside the main body tube, you've got a parallax cell, which actually moves forward and backwards within this piece. And at the back here where your rear ring would be, you've got uh, your gimbal joint for your uh, erector tube, which allows the erector tube to move up and down and affects your uh, uh, vertical and horizontal adjustments. Incorrectly talking down these rings can actually impinge some of these parts which are fitted very tightly together and affect the performance of your scope. As a manufacturer, we understand that the tolerances of these parts is very, very critical. If everything is too loose inside here, then what you have is that parallax cell or that erector gimbal being able to shift from side to side or you know, being able to, to uh, swivel inside the body tube and that can create a, a, quite a serious point of impact shift when you're adjusting your parallax. Um, if it's too tight on the other hand, you can have a situation where even a slight amount of torque on your, on your mounts can squeeze those parts together and then it, it becomes difficult for your, your parallax to turn forward and backwards. Many rifle scope manufacturers go the route of making things a little bit loose, knowing that you're probably not gonna notice a slight point of impact shift with your parallax. That keeps the parallax nice and smooth. However, the downside of this is that you will get that point of impact shift. For us, precision is an absolute non-negotiable, and therefore it is extremely important that you play your part as well and mount your scope correctly. The body tube that these parts fit inside is made of aluminum or aluminium, depending where you're from. And this can't be too thick or too thin. It's got to be thick enough and strong enough that it can't be damaged by a big blow to your rifle if you drop it out in the field or by tightening your, your rings too tight. But it also can't be too weak or too thin. There's got to be enough space inside the tube for, your, for those parts to fit inside or for your erector tube, tube to move. Otherwise, you're not going to get that elevation travel that you're looking for. So there's a very fine balance. We've done quite a lot of tests with all of our scope models to find the correct torque specs. For the Helix and Titan, we strongly recommend that you use a torque spec of between 15 and 18 inch pounds. That's 1.7 to 2 Newton meters. And for the Nexus, we recommend 15 to 25 inch pounds. And that is 1.7 to 2.8 Newton meters. To be honest, for the vast majority of situations, 15 inch pounds is gonna be more than enough. It can vary slightly depending on which mount you're using. For example, if you're using a very wide mount, you've got a much wider footprint, so you can afford to talk down your mounts a little bit more. Uh, but for the vast majority, unless you are using an extremely heavy recalling rifle or treating your rifle really roughly, 15 is gonna be plenty. Now that we've explained some of the sort of rationale behind using the correct 
uh, torque specs and why it's so important. I'm gonna do a quick demonstration. First things first, I'm gonna actually tighten the, the, the um, base uh, nuts over here. I'm not gonna recommend a torque for this because it's different for every single mount and it's very mount specific. It's actually got nothing to do with the, the scope itself. This particular one is 68 inch pounds, which is kind of on the, on the high end, but I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten these two down. And you can see I've already sort of uh, loosened the, the ring screws, but this is where the torque driver comes in. The fix it sticks is pretty simple. You've got a universal torque driver that goes from zero to 65 inch pounds. That slots right in there. And we've got our little Torx screw at the top for the ring screws. We did do a separate video on mounting, which you can check out, which explains how you're gonna go through the whole process of mounting. We're not gonna do that today. We're just gonna show the, uh, the torquing down, but obviously before you torque them down, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your scope is level. And Fix It Sticks actually offers a very, very cool tool to do this. It's a leveling jack. And the leveling jack is, is basically a piece that, that fits into the, onto your Picatinny rail you have to have uh, certain mounts that are, are high enough and, and for most cases a one piece mount won't work but your leveling jack fits onto your Picatinny rail like so and with the jack on your base you can basically take your torque driver and square it up on the, the saddle of your rifle scope and that, that uh, put, keeps it nice and square. So it's a pretty cool tool, and if you're gonna buy the Fix-It Sticks torque driver, you might as well get this as well, it's great to have. But anyway, with your, with your scope leveled out, whichever way you choose to do it, you're going to go in a crisscross pattern like you would normally torque down your rings, and you're gonna make sure that they almost bottomed out with an even space on each side of the, the rings, and using your torque driver, you're just gonna turn it, little by little until it starts to line up on the 15 inch pounds mark. I'm gonna go a little bit more on this because it's a, a nexus. I'm gonna go about 20 inch pounds. And you're gonna basically do that on all sides. Pretty straightforward. Once again, thanks for watching. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this. And you can follow us on social media using the hashtag seeitsendit to show us what you've been up to with your element scope. We'd love to see it.